Okay, this unit we're going to start off with energy, and we're going to take a look at all different aspects of energy. First, let's define what energy is. Energy allows us to do things. So this is why you have breakfast in the morning. This is why you eat lunch. It gives you some energy. You know, maybe you've noticed if you're ever kind of low on energy, all you got to do is eat like a candy bar or something like that, and that kind of perks you up. So the definition of energy is the ability to do work. We'll define what work is a little bit later. But if you were to look in a dictionary for the definition of energy, this is the definition you would get, the ability to do work. There are different forms of energy. So let's take a look at these different forms. One form is electromagnetic. This is solar or electrical energy. This is what we're going to finish this semester with. We're going to take a look at the electromagnetic wave, which is light, and then we're going to finish up the year with electricity. So we're going to take a look at this form of energy uh, at the end of the year. Uh, heat, which includes friction. So we're going to talk about this type of energy a little bit later on today, where whenever there's a collision that uh, occurs or any time two surfaces are rubbing against each other, heat energy is always produced. So think about rubbing your hands together. If your hands are cold, you rub them together, it warms them up, you're producing friction. Nuclear energy, you studied this a little bit last year in chemistry, where you're looking at uh, the reaction of a, an atom splitting and uh, breaking off and hitting other ones and releasing a tremendous amount of energy. Chemical energy, so this would be like a battery or, um, you know, you eating food, the breakdown of the food gives you energy. Then the last type of energy is mechanical energy. In this class, this is the type of energy we're going to look at is mechanical energy. It's the energy of motion or position. So the two forms of energy that we're going to study in this unit are the heat energy, whenever there's uh, friction involved, and this type of energy, mechanical. With mechanical energy, there's three different forms. And you can see we got three different pictures here. So each one of these are going to represent the three different forms. So the first form is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So whenever an object's moving, it has kinetic energy. We're going to use capital E to represent energy, and then the type of energy is going to be the subscript. We did the same thing with forces. So we used capital letter F to represent a force, and then we put the letter to represent what kind of force. So EK is going to represent kinetic energy. The faster something goes, the more kinetic energy it has. Okay, we're going to get equations a little bit later. So right now, we just want to be able to identify what type of energy is present. Now, the reason why is because that's going to help us to figure out what equation to use. So whenever something's moving, it has kinetic energy. The more or the faster it goes, the more kinetic energy it has. Second type of energy is elastic potential energy. So whenever we use the word potential, we're talking about stored energy. So whenever we stretch or compress something, it has elastic potential. So here you can see uh, Robin Hood is drawing an arrow with the bow. So as soon as he stretches the bow, it has elastic potential energy. A spring would have elastic potential energy. A bouncing ball would have elastic potential energy because that ball gets uh, gets compressed in the collision with the ground, and then its ability to come back to its normal size, that's what allows the ball to bounce. So a bouncing ball would have elastic potential energy. <clears throat> we use EEL to represent the elastic energy, and the more something is stretched or compressed, the more elastic energy it has. The last one is gravitational potential energy. So again, this is stored energy whenever it's above ground level. So notice we're saying ground level, not the ground, because if it's on a hill, it's still above ground level. Um, so here you can see the guy lifting the weight. 
the weight itself would have gravitational potential energy. E.g. for gravitational potential energy, the higher it is above the ground, the more gravitational energy it has. Okay, can an object have more than one type of energy at a time? Absolutely. Think about a ball bouncing and moving. So it's moving and it's off the ground. So therefore it has more than one type. So when we talk about the total amount of energy, you would take whatever forms of energy it has, get those values, add them up. That would be the total amount of energy. So why doesn't a ball bounce at the same height each time? Because it loses energy in each bounce due to the heat. So in other words, it went from one form of energy to another. So it went from gravitational potential energy up here. Coming down, it goes to kinetic energy because it's moving. To elastic energy because when it bounces, it deforms. During this time, it loses some of that energy in the form of heat. So whenever there's a collision, heat's lost. And so that's why it can't bounce up to the same height because it doesn't have as much energy as it does up here. Okay. <clears throat> so the total amount of energy stays the same. It just transfers from one form to another. This is called conservation of energy. Okay. So we account for that lost in mechanical energy in the form of heat, and we call that dissipated energy. So we'll call that E-dis. So whenever we're losing some energy due to friction, that's E-dis. Okay, so let's take a look at these three points, point A, point B, and point C of the bounce. And let's take a look at a pie chart. So how much energy or what type of energy is at A, just gravitational? There's no other energies. So it's above the ground, but not moving, not compressed or stretched, hasn't collided with anything, so it's all gravitational. So we're going to use an energy pie chart to represent the total energy was the pi, and all that energy is gravitational. Now let's look at point B. At point B, it's getting compressed, so that gravitational energy has turned into elastic energy. But because of the bounce, there's also some E-dis. So whenever there's a collision, there's some E-dis there. So now this pie chart would look something like this. It's still the same size as what we had at part A because the total energy stays the same. But now that gravitational energy has turned into other forms. What other forms? Mostly elastic, a little bit of E-dis because of the bounce. So now what happens at point C? At point C, gravitational, that E-dis that occurred in the bounce, that continues on throughout each of the different parts. So whatever E-dis you had, that goes to point C. It's moving a little bit. You can see in the picture, so therefore there's a little bit of E-k. So there's these three different forms of energy. So then this pi wedge should look something like this. So gravitational, not as much as we had at A, because it's not as high, the E-dis from the bounce, and the little bit of kinetic energy, these three energies add up to the total energy. So as that ball bounces, the total energy stays the same, just the different forms start to appear. That's what you're doing for tonight's homework, is you're going to look at different situations, and you're going to do pie wedges at different parts.